In this chemical kinetics podcast about small oxidation mechanisms, we will focus on the hydrogen mechanism. We will focus on several aspects about structure and also about the three limits of the hydrogen ignition behavior. Complex mechanisms are complex with many intermediates, stages, and hierarchies between the fuel and oxidizer and the final equilibrium products. Even a simple molecule such as hydrogen is a complex mechanism with many intermediates, reactions, and sub-mechanisms. The hydrogen mechanism is the base of all hydrocarbon mechanisms. At the first level, the oxidation of hydrogen can be divided into two sub-mechanisms. The first sub-mechanism involves combinations of simple hydrogen-oxygen species, such as H, H2, water, O, O2, OH, and H. And these include some pressure-sensitive reactions. The second mechanism involves the oxidation of H2O2, and involves in the additional intermediate species, HO2. The rate constants for these reactions are standardized with accepted values. The first submechanism of hydrogen mechanism involves essentially all combinations of simple oxygen and hydrogen radicals. To understand them, we can look at the valence structures of each. Hydrogen has one valence electron. The electron is either alone, making a hydrogen radical, or shared, making a bond with another atom. The oxygen atom has six valence electrons. These electrons can be single in a radical, paired in a lone pair, or shared with another in one or two bonds. There are three types of bondings that oxygen can take part in. The oxygen atoms, two electron pairs and two unpaired electrons, single bond, a single bond, a single electron, and two electron pairs, double bond, which is two bonds, and two electron pairs. The hydrogen mechanism is not just a list of reactions. It is, in fact, a structured set of submechanisms and regimes that are significant under different conditions. Viewed as a chain branching process, we can see the different types of reactions based on the number of radicals created and destroyed between the reactants and products. The initiation reactions are those where stable species, such as hydrogen and oxygen, form radicals. The chain reaction steps are those in which one radical species in the, in the reactants produces one or two radicals in the products. If these are prevalent, then the hydrogen mechanism moves faster toward ignition. The chain terminating steps are when two radicals and the reactants come together to form at least one stable species. When these reactants are dominant, then the re reaction progress is slowed or even stopped. The first submechanism of simple hydrogen oxygen radicals has a transition, transition through the recombination to the mechanism of more complex species such as HO2 and H2O2. Since HO2 is a radical, the form formation of HO2 are chain branching reactions. The formation of H2O2 can be both terminating and branching. To fully explain the ignition behavior of hydrogen, it, is, it was necessary to augment the reactions with intermediates with further catalytic reactions with the walls. All these reactions tend to slow the progress toward ignition. Under different regimes, different reactions dominate. If the terminating reactions dominate, then ignition is inhibited. But if the branching reactions dominate, then ignition is promoted. This graph shows the different limits of the hydrogen ignition with respect to temperature and increasing pressure. Each regime represents a certain subset of reactions that are dominate. The first limit is at very low pressure well below atmospheric pressure. Experimental evidence shows that the explosion limit is dependent on the size of the vessel. This points to the destruction of radicals at the walls. Low pressure, with the reactions with the wall being more prominent, means that the number of collisions to produce the chain reaction is relatively low. A reaction at the wall acts as a termination reaction, thus lowering the explosive tendency. 
If the termination reactions dominate, explosion does not occur. At higher pressures, the size of the vessel does not play a significant role. But as pressure increases, a higher temperature is needed to create an explosion. At high pressures, three-body reactions can dominate. Thus, reactions with M, which are generally dependent on pressure, can be significant. As pressure increases, the relative rates of ternary reactions increases more than binary reactions. Within the hydrogen mechanism, at pressures above the second explosion limit, HO2 was relatively unreactive. Thus, its formation can be thought of as a termination reaction. It is able to migrate toward the walls. The inhibition of the HO2 reaction dominating above the second explosion limit means that it requires a higher temperature to explode. The peak pressure, which requires the highest temperature, is around a half an atmosphere. In the third limit, at higher pressures, less temperature is needed to result in explosion. This means that the inhibiting effect of the second limit, namely the HO2 inhibition, is not significant anymore. As the pressure increases, even the inhibiting effect of HO2 formation is countered with the formation of H2O2, which in turn is a significant source of hydroxyl radicals. In fact, two for every HO2 molecule.